been talking about uh, preparing for time management, preparing for Ramadan, preparing our our actions, um, establishing intentions before our actions. So uh, we know that Ramadan is coming. We want to practice for for Siyam. We want to practice for our ibadah. So we start early, right? Now we are which month? Shaban. 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 It's right there. Okay, have a seat. I need, I need you to have a seat, please. I need you guys to have a seat. So we are, we are currently in Shaban, right? Shaban is the month before. Shaban is the month before. Ramadan. The Prophet used to do what in Shaban? They used to sleep. 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 So the Prophet would fast most of Sha'ban. Okay, why would he fast most of Sha'ban? Uh, yes. So he can prepare for Ramadan. Okay, that's one aspect. You prepare for Ramadan, that's one aspect. What else? What happens during Sha'ban? What's the significance of Sha'ban? Is Sa'a in my life? Yes, but I'm looking for something else. Virtue of this month. What's so special about it? Anything to do with Ahmad? Anything to do with your actions? Uh, is is uh, from, from No, it's not from Arab. No. What happens during Shaban? The Prophet we said during the month of Shaban, our actions are raised up to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? And I like to see that Allah takes accounts. Allah takes, you know, your yearly accounts in the month of Shaban. It's like submitting your T4 for taxes, right? You have paperwork you have to submit. This is the same thing. You are submitting your year's worth of actions to Allah subhanahu wa And Allah is taking account. So the Prophet said, I'd like to see my actions go up to Allah while I'm fasting. Right? So in case I made a mistake, in case I, I screwed up, in case I messed up, I want to recover by... By night. I'm fasting, right? And this, one of the most beloved, the Habil Ahmad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the, one of the most beloved actions to Allah is Siyam, right? It's fasting. One of the, the, the gates of paradise is called Masjid. Bab al Rayyan. Bab al Rayyan is the door for what? For fasting. People who are fasting, okay? So it's, those, it's for those people who do extra. Are we required to fast for your event? No. No. Yes. No. Yes. no, we're not required. You're only mandatory to fast. It's the only time you're mandatory to fast, not even harafa. You have harafa, like it's, it's very important to fast, but it's not mandatory. The only time it's mandatory is Ramadan. So if you fast any other time, it means you're doing this extra. Ladies, akhawat, in the back. Please step forward four spaces and move over left two spaces. So move forward four spaces and then move two spaces to the left. See where you end up. Then two spaces. Two spaces to the left. To your left. To your left. So of Shaban, if you were to fast a Monday or a Thursday, or you were to fast every other day, it is all. So. So, any fast you do during the month of Shaban or any other month is considered nothing. Okay. Extra. Extra. Voluntary. How do you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through faraad or through voluntary actions? Voluntary actions. Why? Voluntary. Because those are the extra things that not everyone does. What else have to do? Salah, you're required to. Some Ramadan, fasting Ramadan, you have to. You're not doing anything special here. Right? You're doing what you are required to do. What happens if you're a kid? If you're a kid, it's different. I'm, not, I'm talking about those people who are, are responsible. Like adults. Yes. But as you get older, you will become liable and, and responsible. So you practice from when you're younger. Okay? So, when you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get closer through a nawafid, through extra actions. You understand? Zakat. 
What's the difference between zakat and sadaqah? Uh, zakat. Zakat is called. His mom doesn't feed yes. him properly. Or it's voluntary. The difference between zakat and sadaqah. Zakat, you get reward for it because it's part of your ibadah. It's part of worship. If you don't do zakat and you have the money, you will be punished. If someone has money for zakat and they don't pay, that's haram. That is a punishable act. If you have... Off the wall, please. Guys, I need you here, please. If you have if you have extra money and you didn't pay sadaqah, so if you pay sadaqah, you get lots of reward. But if you don't pay sadaqah, if you just didn't do it, you won't be punished. Right? So it's kind of zero sum. Guys, Excuse me, I already said I need everybody off the wall. I need everybody here. Off the wall. Yeah, off the wall. Okay? So, if you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you want to be a righteous believer, and manage your time well, and benefit from the bonuses, you need to do more of? You need to do more? I need the right word. Extra volunteering. Okay. Yes, Hila? No, 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 listen to my question. If you want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to do more of what type of actions? Good actions. Not sunnah. Uh, let's go with your name again. Faris. Zikr? Zikr, no. It's, it's good, but I'm looking for a specific. Starts with a noon. And. The weapon. You need to raise your hand. Okay, anyways, I got it right. That's not fair. Okay, because people have their hand up and you're just blurting answers up. It's nawafid. It's getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa through extra involuntary actions. Okay? Are you required to clean the masjid? No. no. Some, it's a janitor. Somebody, somebody may say, oh, there's, there's, a, there's a janitor that takes care of it. It's not my business. I don't care. Yeah, if, if I see... Not. Have a seat. This is your last warning, please. Otherwise, I'll have you... If you see something in the message that's not supposed to be where it says, if you know, a piece of tissue on the floor says, no, okay, I'm not getting in touch with that. The janitor is getting paid to do what? I'm not going to do his job for him. Right? At least in some you can have, help him. You can have that approach, or you can say, no, this is an extra reward came up my way. I'm going to go and, and, and get benefit from this. Right? Or if you see somebody who is in need, you say, no, it's not my responsibility. He's going to find somebody else. Let me go talk to the office. Right? Or whatever. Someone needs help outside and, and you didn't do it. Or, for example, it's, it snowed, right? And you didn't want to, there's a shovel there. And like, no, it's not my job. It's the job of the landscapers. They have to come in, or the snow crew, they have to come and clean it. Right? But see people You're coming. Being yes, you are being stingy with yourself. Right? So this is one aspect, is the opposite of what a true believer is. Okay? A true believer you know, through races. When Allah says, Sabiqu ila maghfiratun min No. I don't accept that. When I ask a question, I'll ask the question. Do not scream out answers. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sabiqu ila maghfiratun min rabbikum. Right? Or Sabiqu fil khairat. You know, hasten towards good deeds. Or hasten towards... The forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means you need to compete. Right? You need to compete where it matters. You need to, if you find something, well, go take it. Right? Get greedy with good deeds. In other words, don't be stingy. Don't be like, oh, yeah, no, it's okay. The, the first line, I'll give it to somebody else. Okay, you go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. No, you, somebody go and take the first line. Don't ever pass up an opportunity to jump ahead. Okay?
Number one, we start everything with saying in the name of Allah, Bismillah. Okay? In order to bless your time, you say, you start any action you do, because if you do a afar or a nafil, you need to start in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. This puts barakah in your actions. This makes an animal that would be considered haram, halal. Right? Even though the animal's, uh, uh, you know, not pork or not pig, obviously, we we're not talking about that. But in order for an, for an animal to be accepted and become halal, you need to mention the name of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you, you do a proper uh, action. So, mentioning the name of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and obviously, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, said in the Quran, as well-known ayah, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا يَعْبُدُونَ I have not created men, women, or jinn, except for worship. So anything you do is should be considered a form of ibadah, a form of worship. You come to the masjid, it should be considered, I'm coming for the sake of Allah, I want to improve myself as a believer. I'm coming to learn, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah because I want to improve myself. Right? And, and you're doing this for the sake of Allah, subhanAllah, only. As part of your worship. Number two, so in order to manage your time, that's the first thing. You say Bismillah before any do any action. The second is you paint a vision and aim high. Okay? If you want to do something, right? You don't want to become a pro procrastinator. You don't want to delay things. You want to improve yourself. You need to have a vision. Okay? What this means is that you need to have a plan. If you plan to fail, Right? And anybody who fails to plan, plans to fail. Do you understand that? If you fail to plan, if you don't plan properly, you are actually planning to fail. It means that you didn't take the time to put the structure together. You just think that it's going to happen, you know, happy-go-lucky sort of approach. So, if you plan to fail, you are actually failing to plan. Sorry, if you uh, uh, fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Okay, so you need to have uh, an intention, and you follow that with actions. And if you're not doing the action correctly, you need to find a way. If you don't know something, ask someone. Right? If you don't know something, well, I'm not sure how to do it exactly. Well, find someone who knows, find someone that you trust, and find the right way to do it. Right? You're struggling with homework? Well, you go find a tutor. Or you, if you know someone who can help you, you get that help. Okay, so we said the first thing we do is we say Bismillah. Second, we paint the vision and aim high. You must have a goal to know if you are going in the right direction. Visualize your goal. It builds your internal motivation to take the necessary actions to achieve it. Okay? Who's pulling that? Who's pulling the wire? Can you put the wire along the wall, please? Behind everybody. Yeah. Muhammad, can you stand here? I need you to be over here, please. Okay, move here, move here. Away from the wall. Move, move. Let's go. There's a lot of room over there. Move. move. Hey, there's a ton of room here, but no one wants to go there. Okay. I can do that. I'm going to repeat this again. You need to visualize your goal. Sometimes you need to draw a picture. Sometimes you have to write it out. Maybe you hang a picture on the wall and say, well, that's my goal. Right? You make a target. You put a plan together. It builds your internal motivation. When you see something in front of you and you know that's what you want, you're going to work towards that. Yes. Remember, this goal must be tied to your final destination, so aim high. For example, if someone has a big goal of making hajj, what's your plan? First call. Hands up, please. I will not answer anybody who just talked. Yes, sir. You're going to start saving up and figure out what hotel you're going to go to and what flight you're oh. going to save. Okay, so before you start saving your money, what do you do? Make me ask. 
You made your intention, okay? You need to make sure that you are able, you have the strength, you have the, the help, you, then you have the intention. Yes, sir. Um, you need to check on the wife. Okay, so you're, you, you need to save some money, right? You need to have money, you put money on the side. You should check with the white house that comes with it. Okay, and so also, like, when it goes. Sure. You see, you can check the flights, and then you can start preparing for that. Okay, what else? Uh, make sure you have proper clothes. Okay, so you pack well, get your clothes ready. Yes? And get a nice haircut. Make dry before you even go. Okay, so you, you make dry before you go? Wait, wait. Yes? One second. If you're a man, you should, like, shave your head. Uh, you don't do that. You don't have to look at this then. You don't do that before you go. You can do that at oh, yeah, time, okay. right? Um, wait, wait. What else? If you're planning to go ahead, what, what do you need to do? Yes, sir. I need you. Uh, no worries. Let's pass it to your, you in the back. What's your name? Amdir Rahman. Ayla. So we said that already. Make me. That was the first. Yes. Make sure you have an electronic. No, it doesn't work. No electronics. Wait, wait, wait. You can use electronics to manage your plan. I think I know yes. what you're going to do. I need to hear it. Okay. Yes. Uh, you gotta, like, prepare yourself. You gotta, like, prepare yourself, like, uh, just, like, look. Learn, learn, uh, learn everything about Hajj, like, learn all the do's and don'ts. Excellent. So prepare yourself by knowing how to make Hajj. Wait, I got another right? one. Right? Yes, sir. Planning where you're going to stay. Pardon? Planning where you're going to stay. Planning where you're going to stay and so on. Okay, so we have an idea of what we're going to do. Yes. Make sure make sure your plane doesn't crash. Okay. Yes. Me, 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 me. You should. Uh, like, um, since lots of people are like, not used to standing up at night. Me. So you should really, like, crash. And I've been ending for a long time. Give example out. Listen to this. Building muscles. No, no, listen to this. Tamim said, he said, practice hedge at home. Practice what to do here before you go. Okay? How do you do that? Wait, yes. You have to pick your phone before it hurts. Okay. So, that's a sample. How do you do that? That's a sample of how you prepare for hedge. Shouldn't you also, like, practice, like, waking up? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a standard, right? You're not doing that specifically for hedge. If, if you have a project, you need to... Listen. If you have a big project or a big problem, you need to break it into smaller pieces so you can, you can tackle it. Right? If you look at a mountain and say, well, I have to move this mountain from one spot to another, like, oh my god, that's a lot of work. But if you decide, okay, the mountain has four main areas. I will divide it into four... And then divide it into eight and into ten, for example, ten different areas. We chip away at different sides at the same time. We will tackle this big problem. You will eventually move the mountain. Okay. Moving on to the next point. Number three is you need to prepare a schedule around your prayers. Okay? So if you're planning for something, if you want to manage your time well, you need to make sure that your salah is intact. Your plan should not go against your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a framework for your daily schedule. Plan around your five daily prayers and things will, will start to fall in place. Whether you are booking a flight or creating a seminar, there is embedded wisdom in pivoting your tasks around your prayers. Okay? So if you are putting a program together, between Maghrib and Isha, you come for Salat and Maghrib, you pray Isha, and then you can go. You always plan where you can maximize on your salawat. Number four. Are you guys here? Yeah. Yeah. No. Praying Salat and Fajr on time and in the masjid. Okay, so starting your day during Fajr gives you a head start before anyone else in this hayat to do it. Okay? What is the best action you can do in the hadith that the Raka came from the Fatul Fajr? Do you know this hadith? Khayru minat dunya wa maafiha. Khayru minat dunya wa maafiha. Raka'atayin qabla Salat al-Fajr. Two raka'at before Salat al-Fajr is better than anything in this world and whatever 
contains. Do you get it? You know that two sin of prayers you make before small pleasures? This is the be one of the best things you can do all day long. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Many, pe many people don't take it serious, but it, that's a big deal. What's better than that? Okay? Getting out to the masjid makes this more concrete. By the time noon comes around, you'll, you find that you have productivity accomplished most of your daily tasks. You can, you can get a ton of things completed before Fajr, between Fajr and Bola. Right? This, that's the Islamic schedule. You want to do it right? You could do your homework. Everything can be done in those times. Like what if you have to make dinner? The hadith, the Prophet said, he says, Burika Umati fi Bukuriha. Okay, this is uh, narrated by Imam uh, Sunan, Sunan Ibn Majah. He says that the Prophet said, Oh Allah, bless my nation in their early mornings. Right? So if, if the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wake up, guys, excuse me. If the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wake up early, they pray Salat al Fajr. They, you know, you can have your breakfast, you spend time with the, you know, your, your, your family, and then you become productive throughout the day, then you have, you've achieved so much in such a short period of time. I remember once I had to travel, listen to this, once I had to travel, and flight was very early. Muhammad, that's your last morning, please. Put that in the garbage. In the garbage right now. That one. I mean, you have to move it, please. So once we, I had a flight, it was uh, at 7 a.m., okay? Very early flight. And the flight was an hour and a half. Was, I was going to Vancouver. Okay, it's one of those flights I have to take off. It's an hour and a half. By the time we arrived, it was about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, 8.30 or 9, whatever, uh, in, in, in B.C. or at that time. I, I called someone in Edmonton, Alberta, and they were still sleeping. So I'm like, subhanAllah, in an hour and a half, you can hop provinces. You can do, you can be somewhere completely different, and someone else didn't wake up from their bed yet. You understand? So that's, that's productivity, right? That's productivity. No comments. And that's what the Prophet is talking about. That you can do so much in such a short period of time when you are early. Right? You, you establish your salah and then you start your work. Why can't you smack? I don't have the exact. Now, you don't get the back. So, yeah, there's a few hadith, I believe, out there about the importance of uh, your risk and your. your, your uh, um, Okay, in this time. Okay, quickly, we're going to finish this. Um, number five is something that's also very important, and that's exercise. Right? Yeah. Sitting on the couch the whole day and doing your homework is not a great idea. You need to get your walks. You need to get your, you know, drink enough water, for example, eat the right fruits and vegetables. Right? Uh, get your oxygen, get fresh air, and I'm sure you know about your health. health. Guys, guys, excuse me, ladies in the back, ladies, maintaining your health is the, one of the most important things you can do, okay? So here's the, there's a surah in the, in the Quran, but it called, it's called, I'm sure you all know it, surah uh, Quraysh. Allah says, Quraysh, this nation that was in charge of Mecca, keep your hands down, this, this nation that was in charge of Mecca, I protected them from hunger. I gave them food and I protected them from hunger. And I also, uh, I also gave them security from any fear. One thing that Allah is talking about here, the two most important things you have in your life is your health and your security. If you are, if you are starving and there's no food in the house,
very hard to worship Allah, by the way. Absolutely hard. And if you have no house and you're on the street and there's no food as well, it becomes even more hard to worship Allah. May Allah protect all of us. But you need to remember, because you are on this, you have no house, you have no house, you're you're freezing. You could be on the street and you have no food. It's but very how difficult. How can it be hard to worship Allah? It's very difficult because your security needs and your health are not met. And the first thing you need, Shabbat. In order to reach a high spiritual level, your basic needs must be met. If you are hungry. You think you can focus on salah? No, no. You smell the pizza. You smell the, the burgers. Oh, just that's your bad. You smell, just, listen, you smell the popcorn. Okay? If you smell popcorn with butter and salt, okay? You cannot pray. I'll tell you, you can be the biggest chef on the planet. You will struggle to, you know, focus on the, on the, on the salah. Okay? If the kapsa comes in or the kharuf, you know, is presented, very hard. Okay, so that's the point. The point is that if your health is not intact and your security is not intact, it's very hard to worship Allah. It becomes a challenge, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said for Quraysh, I took care of these two most important things and I also gave them business. I gave them a trade route between Mecca and, and, and Dimash in Syria later. They had business and money and opportunity, they had wealth and strength and everything. Shall they not worship the Lord of this family? Right? So Allah's not talking about Quraysh only, He's also talking to us saying, I've given you shelter. And not just any shelter, I've given you beautiful homes. I've given you health. You have sustenance, you have food, you have money, you have strength, you have business, you have whatever you need. Shall we not? Worship the Lord of the Bayt. So you need to ask yourself this question. Am I worshiping Allah enough? Am I delaying my worship? Am I a procrastinator? Because you know when we delay our salah, we don't pray on time and so on, this, this becomes a sign of hypocrisy. Right? And you thought, slowly you start to become a munafiq or munafiq. We don't want to do that, right? We want to be on time, just like how Allah gave us everything, He gave us everything on time. You want to also worship Him on time and correctly and sincerely. We are going to jump to a quick uh, tahoot after salah. Can we do the tahoot after salah? I don't know. Right now. Or is it no. yeah. After salah. So we're going to do the adhan. We're going to focus inshallah. And we'll come back.